Hello students, today in this video, I am going to talk about the emerging concept in the security threats that is hybrid warfare. But if I talk about the definition of the hybrid warfare, it will be little difficult to understand. Rather than if I make a comparison between the conventional warfare and then I will give you examples, then it will be better for you to understand it. Just for an example, what happens in conventional warfare? In conventional warfare, armies from both the sides comes together and head on head, and that is resulting into the loss of lives and property. So after that, the state actors have realized that if you can attack the enemy without bearing any loss of the life, then what is the utility of the conventional warfare? Therefore, they adopt a new weapon that is the cyber warfare. Now, along with the cyber warfare, there are another aspects or the facets that can be used in the internal security threats of any particular country and that comes under the meaning of hybrid warfare. Now, to better understand the hybrid warfare, if I give the example that it is being suspected that the Russia has played its role in 2016 US election and also Russia has played its role in UK Brexit, then it also comes under the meaning of hybrid warfare. However, hybrid warfare has a different facet. For example, if you need to understand the different facets of the hybrid warfare, then it can be political warfare. So whatever example I gave to you with respect to the Russia being suspected in US election, it comes under the meaning of political warfare. Another thing that comes under the meaning of media warfare, it means that you are using your media as a strategy of warfare. If you will see in case of China, then at the time of Doklam crisis, there was a concept of three warfare strategy. That means psychological warfare, legal warfare and the media warfare. So basically this psychological warfare and the media warfare comes under the meaning of hybrid warfare. That you are using media to raise the temperature of the, so you can say to raise the temperature of the environment that gives you maximum advantage. Likewise, if you will see cyber warfare as I have talked about, then another one is proxy warfare. In proxy warfare, you are doing nothing being a state actor, but you are employing the non-state actor to play the role on your behalf. For example, if you will see in case of Hamas and Hezbollah, that is being backed by Iran and that is the main culprit in case of Israel-Iran conflict. So again, that is a kind of or that comes under the meaning of hybrid warfare. That you are not doing anything directly, but you are using many facets or many aspects that is creating threats that can be done by the state actor itself that can be done by the non-state actor also. So I hope now you have understood the meaning of the hybrid warfare. If you will see in case of Syria, what is happening in the case of Syria? So in Syria, there it is called an influential warfare is going on. Or you can say another one is social warfare. In this what is happening that you are focusing upon widening the sectarian or ethnic divide in Syria that is one faction is being backed by Iran and another faction is being backed by the different Arab states. So this all comes under the meaning of hybrid warfare. Now again I want to give you one more example that is the economic warfare that also comes under the meaning of hybrid warfare. For example, US is always talking about that US will impose sanctions on the country having any trade relation with Iran or Russia. That also comes under the meaning of 
hybrid warfare. Again, I want to give you more example that is Belarus. Belarus is accused of supporting the migrants to enter into the Europe through Latvia and Lithuania. And that is, they are doing one kind of warfare by infusing more and more migrants in Europe. So that everything comes under the meaning of hybrid warfare. So now I think you have understood that how conventional warfare is different from the hybrid warfare. In hybrid warfare, you are using media. In hybrid warfare, you are using propaganda. In hybrid warfare, you are using economic means that is infusing counterfeit currency in the country. What Pakistan is doing, Pakistan is infusing counterfeit currency through Nepal, Bangladesh, UAE. That is impacting the economic sovereignty of India. That also comes under the meaning of hybrid warfare. So now I hope you have understood it completely. Now there are another keywords which might you have might have read in the newspaper that is called as gray zone conflict. Then another one is hybrid threats. So if you will see this particular diagram, then where does the gray zone lies and what is the meaning of gray zone? If you will see, then gray zone is a kind of low intensity conflict. Here again, there is no any head on head between the armies of two different countries and it is an irregular warfare. It can be a kind of guerrilla warfare. It can be kind of propaganda machinery working at one time and then subsiding at another time, then again reactivating it at another time. Then it comes under the meaning of gray zone conflict. If you will see the hybrid threats, then the threats which is coming from all the facets which we have discussed, it's called a hybrid threats. And the umbrella term for each and everything is hybrid warfare. Understood the meaning of gray zone, the meaning of hybrid warfare. Now, if you will see, then what are the advantages of hybrid warfare? The very first thing is asymmetric nature. Being a asymmetrical in nature, it does not come under the threat assessment profile of any particular country. What do you understand by threat assessment profile? For example, if you are the head of intelligence bureau, you are making an assessment of the threat. That okay, China is a threat, Pakistan is a threat, then it is a symmetrical threat. But what kind of asymmetrical threat is coming and is hampering your security, it goes outside the understanding of a person who is making an assessment of the threats because of the asymmetrical nature of the hybrid warfare, that it can be guerrilla warfare, that it can be propaganda masonry, it can be a radicalization, it can be anything. Multi-actor, it means that there will be an involvement of a state and non-state actor both. The third, a scale and target. They can bring a maximum damage with minimum effort. With minimum effort. And it is very easy to, it is very easy to impose a harm in the urban area of the country. Deniability. There is a high degree of a scope of plausible deni deniability. You can say that, no, I have not done this. For example, the drone attack. Drone attack is coming from Pakistan. Pakistan can say, no, 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 we have not done this. So, plausibility and the deniability is very significant in the hybrid warfare. Now, if you will see, if the cyber warfare is coming, and then you will have to make an assessment that how much it has a threat on India. Then then new forms of attack, new forms of terrorist attack can India can expect. That is the lone wolf attack can happen. Then the cyber attack is happening. As we, cyber attack may India ka ranking fifth hai, vulnerability mein, according to semantic core. According to semantic core. Then disinformation. What is the impact of disinformation? You are 
fake news is happening it has an impact on mob lynching and then mob lynching what the mob lynching is doing mob lynching is creating a divide in the society and this division in the society can be exploited by the external agents or any terrorist organization financial influence what kind of financial influence can happen so what can happen that if i am infusing counterfeit currency in india then it will create a parallel economy it will impact on it it will have an impact on inflation it will have an impact on the diversion of the youth it will have an impact on dwindling the investment climate of the country it can have many impact now what can be done in this regard what we can do the very first thing that synchronize real time response for that we will have to focus upon cyber drill we are, for that we will have to focus upon training for that there should be a real time situational awareness software real time situational awareness software then from the security front from the security front or technological front we can go for patch patch application we can go for multi authentication multi authentication we will have to restrict the admin access these are the things we can do in the terms of real time or you can say say in the terms of technological aspect then international collaboration what we can do in the terms of cyber attack budapest convention is there there is ongoing indo japan cyber forum is going on or the we are focusing upon how we can improve or how we can check the cyber threats then the safety of the digital ecosystem we will have to develop it so how you can develop the digital ecosystem safety it can be done by employing the technology in long with this i will say the role of civil society should not be undermined the role of private party should not be undermined because the private party like asosam nasosam microsoft they can provide training to the journalist so that journalist can focus upon improving or journalist can focus upon checking the rise of disinformation and the fake news so we will have to do it from the multifaceted approach to check the impact of the cyber threats and india is you cannot say that india is not vulnerable to the cyber warfare or india is not vulnerable to the hybrid warfare india is one of the most vulnerable country for this kind of emerging threats that we are witnessing in the ease of technology so that's all about the hybrid warfare i hope you have understood it thanks to all of you